for the moment you all have been waiting for. And you might say, Jacob, I don't know what you're talking about. You guys, Julie and I have literally gotten so many DMs, so many questions asking, how do you find the right person for you? How do you find a godly spouse? How do you find the person that God has for you? And there's been so many people who have asked us this. And so today, you guys, we decided we're going to sit down and tell you guys how to find a godly man or a godly woman in your life that you can pursue and hopefully uh, pursue for marriage. And so, like, I'm so passionate about this just because I know how important it is to keep Christ at the center of a relationship. Yeah. And, you know, as much as we say, you know, hey, you know, you need to wait on the Lord's timing and when the time is right, the Lord will make it happen. Yes, that is 100% true. But there are some practical things like we gotta break down and we gotta go through. If you wanna know how to find somebody that's gonna honor you and love you in the way that the Lord says. Yeah, I definitely think we wanna preface with, obviously we know that God does not promise that we're gonna get married or that that there is someone out there for everyone. But at the same time, many of you will get married because a lot of people do have that desire. And if you don't have the desire, that's okay. But if you do have that desire and God has given you that desire, God has a plan for you in your life. And so it is important to know the steps that you need to take, what you need to look for, maybe what you need to look out for and watch for. And so we just wanted to give you guys our best advice on how to find a godly spouse. Yes, awesome. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is being in the word of God. And so you guys don't know what that is. That is the Bible. This is God's word. And something that is so important is, especially when we are pursuing a relationship, we're trying to find a relationship, whatever it might be, you know, something that's really, really important is we first have to be fulfilled by the Lord and be content in our relationship with him. Because if we can't hold a relationship with God and we can't dig into his word and actually want to spend time with him, what makes us think we're ready for a relationship if we're not even giving God the correct amount of time, you know? Yeah. Am I going to be able to treat my future significant other, you know, it might be your future wife, it might be your future husband in the right way if I'm not actually spending time with the Lord and walking with him daily. And so that's the first thing that is super, super important. It's spending time in this book right here, spending time with God, setting aside time and allowing your life to revolve around this instead of allowing this to come secondary or complementary to your life. It's so important to keep him at the center. Yeah, that's so good. And yeah, I just think it's so important to know who you are in Christ, to have your identity rooted in Christ, because if you don't know who you are, you will not be able to love someone else well. And that kind of leads me into the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the standards that you set for whoever it is that you're looking for, you need to uphold yourself. And so if you're looking for a godly spouse, are you a godly person yourself? Like, is a godly spouse gonna want you? Are you gonna fit their standards? Because I think it's so easy to create this checklist for other people to fit into when you have it self-examined and said, okay, have I actually started a relationship with God like I need to? Am I consistent in my word? Am I honoring my family? All those different types of things. And so that's a challenge for yourself is before you even look for a spouse or for a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever, you need to look to God, look at the mirror and say, okay, is my relationship with God on the right track? Am I in God's word? Am I spending time with good people around me? Am I actually living the way that I say that I want to and the way that I say that the person that I need to marry needs to act one day? A very like honest and real example that I can give you guys is I kind of thought that, oh, if someone's just a Christian, then like that's gonna be good enough, right? Like I'm looking for a Christian. And I quickly found out that just because they're a Christian doesn't make them right for me. And this was a situation in my past where I was so blinded by the, oh, it's perfect. We go to church together, it must be meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't really thought about the practical aspects of that person's relationship with God. Like, is it really there? Am I truly where I need to be? At that point in my life, I wasn't where I needed to be with God. I didn't know that God was my everything. I didn't trust God with everything. And that led to a lot of hurt down the mm -hmm. road. Yeah, and, and one thing I wanna touch on is like, you guys are never gonna be perfect. None of us are ever going to be perfect. But it's also like, 
are we living a life that is honoring to God and are we following him at all times? You know, there's a difference between living in sin and then repenting when you fall, right? And so I just want to kind of clarify among that as well with what Julia was saying. But that honestly leads like directly into this next thing that I wanted to talk about. And I feel like there's a stereotype of like Christian guys and Christian girls. They see a Christian guy or a Christian girl who's really cute and they're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to marry that person. Yeah. And it's just because like, oh, they're Christian. They say they're Christian. Also, and that must mean that they're going to be the perfect fit for me. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's not the case all the time. You guys might not actually be in the same place in your faith. You guys actually might not be equally yoked. And what equally yoked means basically is that you guys are running this race of faith at the same speed and you guys can continue to learn and grow together. It would be hard if somebody who just came to know Jesus and somebody who's been walking in the faith for 10 years tried to get into a relationship. That would just be extremely difficult because one person, has followed the Lord for 10 years and one person hasn't, right? And so yeah. what I, I'm not saying like that can't happen, that can happen and the love of Jesus can change someone in an instant. But there is definitely a stereotype where it's like, oh my goodness, there's a Christian woman of God, there's a Christian man of God. It's like we fall head over heels without actually getting to know them, see yeah. their fruit. Like, are they truly pursuing Christ? What does that walk look like? And you know, it's not a bad thing to get excited about those things. Oh, like, no, oh, there's a cute woman of God, you know, like I want to get to know her. And you know, that's why you step into that. Then you get to know that person and then you get to kind of talk to them and see if they're the right person for you. And something, something that I kind of wanted to add to that, and this was like something that I always caution myself with and I always try to give people the advice to do. You should not even entertain the thought of dating them though, if they aren't a Christian. And that might not be the most popular opinion, but it is not your job to date them in order to convert them to Christianity like definitely tell them about the gospel like be friends with them but you need to be equally yoked in your relationship and so the first thing you should check for is if they have the same beliefs as you do and if they don't share the gospel with them you know that's awesome but it isn't enough to make it a perfect match but right. definitely always make sure that they do have the same beliefs as you right that's really really good i think another thing i get all the time is like okay jacob i have the standard i know the standard i'm walking with jesus i still can't find my man or woman of god and so this would be my next answer is like if god has called you into relationship and you know you're meant to be in a relationship with somebody where are you looking like i feel like there's a lot of times we live life and it's like oh this girl is just gonna match magically fall right in front of my face. And like, although that's an awesome expectation to have and it's awesome to live in faith like that, there's also a practical side of, am I gonna meet my future wife at church or am I gonna meet her at a party? right? It's just like those different dynamics that we have to think about. I was so convinced that if I just hung out in the right place at the right time, no matter if I was surrounding myself with good people or people that were leading me astray from my walk with Christ, I would soon find that person. Yeah. But that wasn't the truth at all. It was when I started truly following Jesus, hanging out with people who sharpened me, right? As iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And fully trusting that God would bring me that person and his timing, look who he placed in my life. Like he placed Julia in my life. And where was that? That was through through an amazing Christian community I met online. Yeah. And then that was through an amazing Christian community where we were actually able to go and do an event together. And although we weren't talking during that time, we were like friends, I knew of her. And it actually came down to a Christian prom that she invited me to, yeah. that I was actually able to spend, like I had never spent like good time with her because I was in another relationship. So obviously there was clear boundaries there and she was kind of just a friend. But when that relationship ended and we went to this, we truly got to know each other and have fun. We were surrounded by other like-minded believers and it was just so awesome and so fulfilling to see God just place this person in my life while I was following him, but also as I was making good decisions and continuing to walk and do life with other brothers and sisters in Christ who would help me and lead me in the right direction and lead me astray. Yeah, that's really good. And I don't think either one of us are really like looking for our future spouse. Like honestly, when I met Jacob, I didn't really think that. And I think a good place to be is to not set the expectation too high because you don't want to get your hopes up and then yeah. like get your heart completely broken. Right. But there were things that I noticed about Jacob that I was like, oh, like 
That would be kind of a nice quality to have in my future husband. And the more I got to know him, the more I was hopeful that, you know, we could be married someday. And I know we were talking about standards earlier, but maybe you don't know what standards you need to have. And that's a very real place to be is you're like, okay, well, what standards do I need to have? Like, are there things I need to be looking for specifically? And there are commandments that the Bible gives husbands and wives in Ephesians chapter five. And this is just something I want to encourage you guys with is if you don't have a list of standards, that you want in your future spouse or you want in yourself, make sure that you are upholding what scripture says. And so in Ephesians chapter five, verse 25, it says, husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. This is such an awesome passage and we could go on like an entire yeah. sermon about this. But what this is saying is that this man must love you like Jesus loves you, loves the church, and that he must be willing to sacrifice That's for good. you. Yeah. And he's a humble person. Like all of these things, someone who's willing to answer to God. If he's not willing to answer to God, then he's not gonna be able to love you in the right way. Mm -hmm. So align your standards with what it says in the word of God, and that'll set you up for a lot more success than if you're like, he has to be six feet tall, he needs to be <laughs> a brunette, like all of your little yes. lists and stuff. And also, I just want to put this out there. You know, we're talking about all these things, these standards you should set and how you should follow the Lord and, and be surrounded by good people and being in the you know correct places. But it's also like, I don't want you guys to set a false expectation of like, okay, and when this happens, my relationship is going to be perfect. Like that's not yeah. the case at all. And as a man of God and as a woman of God, there are times where we are going to fall short in loving mm -hmm. our significant other and our spouse like Christ loves the church. But the, the truth behind all of this is God's love can transform your life. And it will transform your life when you meet it for the first time. In a blink of an eye, it can completely change your life. And so that's the important thing to know is when you walk with the Lord, He can help you love others in a way that you never could in your own strength. Yep. He can help you lead and guide your significant other to the cross every single day in a way that you never could in your own strength. And that's why we can't do it alone. Jesus has to be in the equation. Our marriage, yes, it's between me and Julia, but it's also between God. Like our relationship belongs to the Lord. Yeah. And that's how we have to constantly think of our relationship. And I would encourage you, that's how you should think of your relationship as well. Because once we try and take control, we will soon understand and figure out that we actually can't control anything at all. We're weak. Our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. And so how are we made strong? It's through Christ. And so that's just such an important so thing to remember. We could go on and on on yeah. and on just talking about this topic and I just wanted to give you guys some practicals and just sit down with Julia and kind of just chat through a little bit of our story but also through some practical things that we did and some things we've realized in our relationship as we've stepped into this yeah and one last thing that I wanted to add is I know you probably didn't click on this video to hear us say this but also like sometimes you're gonna have to wait on the Lord and mm -hmm. patience is so important. And we didn't have to wait as long as some people do, you know? And you might be like, you guys didn't wait very long at all. And we were blessed to have this be our story. And some people's story, they have to wait a little bit longer or God has a plan that's different than what ours is. And pray and ask God for patience. Pray and ask God to make you content in the situation that you're in, in your season of singleness, if you will. And I don't even really think that that's a good term for it because you don't know when your singleness is gonna end. So you need to live each day being single as focused on God as you possibly can. One day when you're in a marriage, hopefully you'll never be single again, yeah. right? So enjoy your single years, enjoy that time to grow closer with God and don't rush it. Like wait on the Lord, trust in his timing, have patience because he has a plan for you and you're not gonna be able to just write your own story, right? That's not what you wanna do because that'll lead to a road of hurt. Mm -hmm. Trust in God, we will be praying for you guys and whatever it is that God wants to do in your life, that is the thing that we want most for you. So if he has your spouse for you right around the corner, then maybe he does, but maybe he has you waiting a little bit longer and that's what only God knows and you can pray and ask him to give you patience and guidance in that area. Yes, he is the author and the writer of our salvation, and he's also the author and writer of our story. And so we just want to encourage you guys with this today. And so I hope that our tips and our advice that we gave you on just different practicals to look for and apply to your life and finding a godly man or a woman and a future godly spouse would just help you guys in your walk. And we hope that you're encouraged by our story. We hope that you're encouraged in this. And so you guys, we love y'all. Leave a comment about something you enjoyed. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Leave a like on the video that helps us kind of do this and yes. uh yeah you guys we love y'all i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you 
in the next one. Bye. Peace.